Hey everyone, it's Timmy Gobbles, and today's video goes out to the Duong Wei, who wanted to know how to set up UI to get a game controller to move objects around like a mouse. I thought about this, about making a custom game controller, but what I'm going to end up doing is just having your game controller move the mouse around. So if you can do it with a mouse, after this tutorial, you should be able to do it with a game controller with some caveats. So I'm gonna start out with this empty project, go ahead and throw in some organizational folders, and I'll start with an empty scene called main, and we'll go ahead and give it a script. Since we're dealing with inputs, I'm gonna throw in the input function, and while I'm at it, I need to add buttons to my project setting. So I'll go to the input map, add a up, left, right, down, and I think an enter and a left mouse button, which I'll call LMB. So since I'm gonna be using a gamepad, I wanna change the, the dead zone on these directions to 0.2 instead of 0.5. I think 0.5 is too big of a dead zone. I'm gonna add in my keyboard uh, buttons as well as the gamepad axes for this to show that you could also use um, like keyboard buttons if you wanted to. And you can have multiple buttons work on the same inputs. So here for up, I have up the arrow key and the joypad axis uh, for the left stick. I'm gonna be using the left stick for this. Okay, with that set up, what else do I need? All right, just making sure the scene works. Let's test early, test often. And typically, when I'm using a continuous input, like a joystick, I like to use the physics process to deal with that logic. And we're gonna need to get the value of that input. So if you go to input, you can find the function get vector, which takes four uh, inputs and returns a vector that's less than or equal to one and has a round dead zone. So it's really nice for um, controllers. If you were to use the get access for your X and Y's, um, your dead zone would actually be square instead of round. Okay, so my four inputs are gonna be left, right, up, down. Remember that up is negative and down is positive um, for the Y. And I'm gonna go ahead and define a constant for how fast the mouse moves, but I'm gonna call mouse speed. I kind of just guessed it at 200, but I'll end up changing it later. All right, and I want to test that get vector function. So I'm just going to print it out uh, in the empty scene. And it seems to be working, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Next, I want to talk about the warp mouse uh, function, and it's in the viewport class. It takes a vector2 as an argument, and it moves the mouse cursor. So we can use this combined with the uh, that vector to move the mouse in the direction that the joystick is pointing. So we need to get the viewport and then tell the viewport to warp the mouse. And we need to know where the mouse is. And then we want to add some kind of vector based on that left stick vector. So if you get the global mouse position and pass it, the mouse won't move at all. So we wanna add that input vector times the mouse speed times delta so that it's um, frame rate independent. And here it is working with my arrow keys. One thing you'll notice is it moves faster to the left. If I get the mouse position at the beginning of physics process and subtract it from the mouse position at the end of physics process and print that out, I can see how much the, the mouse cursor moved uh, resulting from our um, code. So it's moving four to the left and only three to the right. So my guess is what happening is here is something is truncating that vector inside of warp mouse. So we wanna tell it how to truncate before it does it itself. Um, and I found using round worked well for this. So we'll just round the whole 
inner argument and test it out. Now we're moving three to the left, three to the right, and our diagonals are fine too. I don't like how slow it is, so I doubled the mouse speed and thought it felt a little better. Now I haven't tested it yet with the controller, uh, but it works with the, uh, the keyboard buttons, so I'm assuming it's good so far. All right, so now that we can move the cursor around with buttons instead of the mouse, I need something to drag around. So I'm gonna make a static body 2D and I'm gonna call it draggable. And it needs a script. And we'll give that script a class name to make it easier to call and code. All right, and our static body 2D needs a collision and something to show up on the screen. So I'm just gonna take this mesh instance 2D because I don't know an easier way of just making a rectangle. I'll make the collision shape a rectangle with uh, 40 by 40 pixels. And then in the mesh instance, I'll choose a quad mesh and give it the same size as the collision. And then I modulated it to kind of a red color to make it easier to see. Now I need two signals from the collision mouse entered and mouse exited and i want my draggable to send a signal mouse on and mouse off to tell the parent when this draggable has a mouse over it and when the mouse is left and i'll have that signal emit with a reference to the draggable itself just by calling self next in main i need some functions to handle those signals so I'm gonna make on draggable mouse on and an on draggable mouse off. Both will take a draggable as an input. Next, I wanna keep track of the mouse draggable. So I'm gonna make a variable that's draggable called mouse draggable and set it equal to null. And I also want to keep track of the dragged draggable. So I'll we'll make that a variable as well. Next, when a draggable signals that the mouse entered it, we want to check if it's not equal to the mouse draggable. And if so, we'll reassign the mouse draggable to that new draggable. Next, if the mouse exits, we want to, if the signal draggable is the same as the mouse draggable, we want to set mouse draggable equal to null. This should prevent us from trying to call behavior on draggables that don't have the mouse on them. All right, so that's all well and good, but how do we tell the code when to do something with those draggables? We're gonna go ahead and do that in first the physics. The dragged draggable needs to move to where the mouse is. I'll go ahead and get some of the debugging lines out of there. So if there is a drag draggable, move it to where the mouse global position is. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. Next in the input uh, method, if the player presses enter or the left mouse button, then we want to assign the mouse draggable to dragged draggable. But we only want to do that if there is a mouse draggable. So we'll throw that if in there. Uh, and lastly, we want to do something when the player lets go of the left mouse or enter button. So if that event is the action released for those buttons, we want to make dragged draggable null so that physics stops dragging something around. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop a draggable into main to show this working out. So somewhere in main's code, I have to connect those signals. I could either make it an export variable, which I was thinking about doing, but I'm just gonna be lazy and do it in ready. So I want to connect the mouse on and mouse off functions to on draggable mouse on and on draggable mouse off. And that should work because it's passing up the reference to itself. So I don't think I need anything else in here. All right, let's go ahead and run the scene and it's not working. So maybe it's not getting it because it's like just off the screen. So then if I move it here, it still isn't working. 
And the issue is that Sprite2Ds have this input field and pickup needs to be selected on for it to get mouse input. By default, it just sort of ignores them. So there we go. If I put the mouse cursor on and I click it, I can move it around. If I do it with the keyboard and I hit enter, I can also move it around. To kind of show what this mouse draggable and drag draggable stuff is doing, I'm gonna go ahead and print some, print some of what's going on just to show what it's doing in the background. So if the left stick vector is not close to zero, we'll go ahead and print it out. So that'll print when we're move, mashing the arrow keys or the joystick. And when we attempt to drag something, I'll print a message with the mouse draggable. And we let, when we let go of the enter or mouse button, we'll print something with the dragged draggable. So you can see it print out when it's going to say null if there's nothing, and it's going to give the very long variable name otherwise. One thing I don't like is when you click on the draggable, it centers it on the mouse. So we're going to put an offset variable in here called dragged offset. And when you pick up a draggable, it's going to set this offset equal to the difference between the mouse position and the center of the draggable, which just happens to be its position. So then when we pick up a draggable, we'll do dragged offset equals global mouse position minus, or rather, let's do it after we've picked up the draggable. So global mouse position minus drag draggable dot position. And then in physics process, instead of moving it to the mouse cursor, we're gonna move it to the mouse cursor minus that offset. Okay, so then to test it, if I grab the corner, it doesn't move the box instantly. It waits till I move my cursor. Now if we comment out that offset, and it's kind of hard to see because the box is small, so I'll go ahead and make it a little bigger. So I'll make it a 160 pixels instead of 40. And I'll have to do that for both the mesh and the collision. So then here, if I grab that corner, it automatically centers it to my mouse. And you might want to do that. You might want not want to. Uh, what might be fancy if you use a tween to tween that offset to zero so that it gradually approaches uh, centered on the mouse instead of just jerking to it. I think that looks a little wonky. All right, and I haven't even tested the controller out. I've just been using the mouse. So I need to add a controller button to enter. I totally forgot to do that earlier. And so then I want to print something out that shows that I'm using the joypad. So in attempting to drag, I'm going to add a space. And then I think if I just print event, it should say whether what it came from. And I could do the same thing in um, when we're letting go. So I'll do the same thing with a space and then event. Uh, if you do comma, you can print multiple things on the same line. It's fancy. Okay, so if I'm pushing the mouse button, you can see it doing this input mouse event button. And if I'm hitting the joypad, it does this input event joypad button. All right, and there we go. It works with the joypad. Um, hopefully this is enough to accomplish what you're looking for. Otherwise you're going to have to create kind of like a custom cursor that moves around probably with like an area or something. One funny thing I didn't account for is you can actually move the cursor off screen and still move it around, which I think is funny. So for that, you might want to create some kind of clamp that keeps the mouse on the screen. That's it for today. I hope you have a good one.